Epic Church Power fans, this video comes to you from a field located in Northwest Ohio. We're at DMI 9021 Hydrowide Plow that has a 40 foot wide cut and is 77 feet in length. It's working with a 650 engine horsepower Big Bud 65050 articulated four wheel drive tractor. In this video, we'll visit with Darren Meyer, the owner of this massive moldboard plow, to talk about its production history, specifications, and original price tag. But first, let's head out to the field so that you can see and hear this big tillage team at work. Bill Dietrich, a farmer from Goodfield, Illinois, founded Dietrich Manufacturing Incorporated in 1961, initially producing hog crates, waters, and fertilizer equipment. Bill Dietrich is friends with John Kinzenbaugh, the owner of Kinsey Manufacturing, well known for its top-selling corn planters and grain carts. In 1971, John developed a variable width plow and demonstrated it under the Kinsey brand and then licensed it to his friend Bill, which manufactured and marketed the plows under the DMI name. DMI manufactured moldboard plows through the 1970s and 1980s under the slogan of designed and manufactured with integrity. In the 1980s, DMI expanded its tillage line beyond moldboard plows to include culture chisels for conservation tillage. By the 1990s, the company was well known for its heavy duty disc rippers and fertilizer application equipment like the Nutriplacer for applying anhydrous ammonia. By 1997, DMI was generating $77 million in sales. In 1998, Case IH, the full-line farm equipment manufacturer, acquired DMI and continues today to build their heavy-duty disc rippers as the Case IH 875. Now that you know a little bit more about Bill Dietrich and the company that he founded, we're going to talk with Darren Meyer, the farmer that owns the 21 Bottom DMI 9021 Moldboard Plow, and talk to him about its design and history. So we have a 65050, and this is a pretty rare big bud. It's uh, neat to see it here at the show, and it's hooked up to the 21 Bottom Plow, which we'll take a look at here in a few minutes. So, can you tell me just a little bit about the 65050 and who owns it? And yeah. yeah, the owner is Larry Adelman from North Adams, Michigan. He actually owns, I believe, five or six big buds. Uh, I purchased my one 52550 from Larry. He owns the 65050. It was originally to be sold to Australia, that's why it has the yellow uh, decals on it. Uh, it has the ROPS cab, where if you see the, there's two other uh, Big Bud 65050 agricultural models, one in Canada, I believe one in Australia, and uh, those have the cruiser cab, where his is, I think it's the only one with the ROPS cab. And, uh, it has a 12V92 Detroit. And I believe he told me he had the bigger injectors in it where 
I don't know what the horsepower, but it, it pulls this 21 bottom with no problem. Here we can see the full length of the 21 bottom DMI Hydro Wide. And uh, just impressive to see 77 feet of moldboard plow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it gets around pretty good, though. Yeah. So right now it's hooked up to the Big Bud 65050 and you pull it with your 52550 out. Imagine the tractor knows it's back there when you're when you're running good. It does. It it does a nice job pulling it. This plow, the first owners, like I said, the versatile Big Roy pulled it for the first fall. And then they purchased a 52550 Big Bud and pulled it with that. The next person that bought it had a uh, Steiger Tiger, but he never pulled it. Uh, he got killed in a farm accident. And then the next owner had a 52550 with triples, which is right over there. And it was behind that big bud. And then I purchased the plow and the big bud. So it, this plow has always been pulled basically with a 52550 big bud. Well, very interesting, and it certainly would have been something to see the Big Roy yeah. pulling this, because unfortunately that tractor has had little field time in the past uh, 45 years or so. Yep. But uh, what was the drawback uh, in using the Big Roy with this plow? Uh, the fella told me that if they got any kind of soft conditions, that the tires all in a row, all eight tires, four on each side, would cut a trench and it, it did not perform well at all, especially in soft ground. Even in, and they were in the Red River Valley near Fargo, and even in normal ground, it still cut a trench. And so that's why they went with the 525.50 and it had 30.532 with duels. And they had filled all eight tires with uh, fluid. And that's what they plowed with for a number of years. Well, I imagine the way you have it set up with the triples, that even gives you a little more traction and flotation to... Seems to work okay. I don't plow a lot with it, like at these plow days, but it, it does well with it. it. It does very well with it. 1978, Bill Dietrich, during the blizzard of 78, his employees couldn't come to work, so he went to his basement and kind of drew up the entire framework for this plow in one day. That's what he told me. Uh, during the blizzard and then it was at the Farm Progress Show uh, Taylorville, Illinois in 1978 behind a Steiger Tiger that was uh, I guess it would be Warner Turbo uh, had one. They were a turbo shop and a Steiger dealer and they turned up a Steiger Tiger to the max where they uh, seized a cylinder while they were testing it on this plow but they got it going and they filled all eight tires with fluid. They said it was such a heavy fluid, they burnt three fluid pumps up, pumping it in the tires. But they had that Steiger Tiger, it had a KTA 1150 Cummins in it, like the Big Buds, and they had it really jacked up horsepower wise, is what Terry Warner told me. And that's what pulled the plow in Taylorville in 1978. What kind of price tag was on a plow like this? I believe Bill told me that was 38000 new in uh, 1978. It'd be a steal of a deal today for it. <laughs> they were still making them. So we're going to take a look at the hitch on the DMI 900 with the 21 bottoms. Uh, this has a lot of different features to allow it to adjust in the field and uh, give you the either the most narrow or widest cut. So how does this work? You have your hydraulic cylinder that moves the hitch back and forth. It pivots back there. This is your linkage arm that comes across over to that one bottom. And then that links to all the other bottoms all the way through the plow. So when this plow hitch moves, it moves that bottom, which moves all of them and it changes the draft of the plow. Over here we have the serial plate and the gauge that shows how the plow is set. We'll take a look at the serial plate. So what does this um, indicate as far as the uh, production of the machine? It is a 900 series DMI plow. 
and it is a 21 bottom. So, for instance, if it was a 9012, it would be a 12 bottom. This is 9021 being the 21 bottom, and below that, the serial number you can see is 000001, meaning it's the first and it's the only one made. I talked to Bill Dietrich, who built the plow, and he said it is the only one that was ever made. Well, it's an impressive, impressive plow, and we can look here at the hydrowide gauge. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the, the hydrowide as far as what that allows it to do? Yeah, it's, if you look, it's just linked to that first bottom right there with this little rod. And when it's all the way over to 12, it's only cut a 12 inch cut. But when you adjust that hydraulic cylinder and the plow widens out, it can go up to 22 inch cut on every bottom. So when you're running at 22, how wide of a swath are you making in one pass? Well, at 22, it would be 38 and a half feet wide, but Bill actually made it. It'll go 23 and a half, and it'll make a 40-foot cut. That's the way he designed it. He wanted the plow to make a 40-foot pass. And if we look um, just on the other side of the gauge, we can see Bill autographed the plow, which is pretty cool. And that was at the last plow day we had when we were plowing with it. He came in 2018, yes. It's 77 feet long. That must be a little bit of a, a challenge when you're going down the road. It is, but uh, the plow steers with this large white pipe. You can see there's a hydraulic cylinder back there on that first post. And when you steer the plow, it will almost like crab steer. So you can go right around a corner. Uh, very good design. It, it, it's actually pretty nice to get around with. Well, it looks like a very sturdy and simple design, which makes it handy for uh, keeping it up and uh, servicing it and making sure it does what it's supposed to in the field. Yes. I hope you've enjoyed spending some time out in the field with this Big Bud 65050 tractor operating the 21 bottom DMI 9021 hydrowide plow. 
I would like to hear in the comment section below the video, if you plow on your farm, tell me about the tractor and moldboard plow that you operate, or share some great plowing memories from the past. If you have appreciated this presentation, I hope that you'll consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube, where there's over 2,000 videos of farm machines in action. If you would like to see additional content featuring Big Tractor's moldboard plowing, continue to watch for a few more seconds to the end screen for a direct link to two more Big Tractor Power YouTube videos. As always, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.